All right, welcome back. In this video, we're going to take a look at a book by Dr. Tara Swart called The Source, The Secrets of the Universe, The Science of the Brain. And let's go. So first off, who is she? Well, she's a psychiatrist, she's a neuroscientist, and senior lecturer at MIT. And she shows us in a book, The Source, how to strip away our skepticism with ancient tools of manifestation and visualization for freeing us of self-limiting behaviors and propelling us towards our truest, most authentic selves. So this is about using neuroscience and behavioral psychology with lessons in neuroplasticity, emotional and logical thinking, self-care and relaxation. And in her book, she guides the readers through scientific breakthroughs and personal revelations that changed her from an unhappy, closed-minded and disconnected woman wanting more from life to a successful entrepreneur living with confidence, purpose and joy. All right, so how do we do this? Well, let's show you, let's go. All right, so let's take a look at this book, and I'm going to give you some of the highlights of it that I think are worth mentioning. All right, so in order to make stuff happen, we need to get this step one done. So this is about figuring out what your goal is and making sure that the goal is ecologically sound. In other words, that it's cool with your mind, your heart, and your gut. So this is about making your goal so that it's logically cool, that it's emotionally cool, and intuitively, it feels good all the way around. Okay, so how do we go about doing that? Well, okay, put your hands on your head and then you ask yourself, gee, is this what I want? All right, so let's say that my goal here was to get 100,000 subscribers on YouTube, okay, or to learn Spanish or something like that. So I put my hands on my head and say, is this really what I want, you know? And if I feel like in my head, like the logic of it sounds like it's copacetic, like it's congruent, then uh, I'm cool. So then I put my hands on my heart after taking five deep breaths and I say, why do I want this? You know, why do I want a hundred thousand subscribers or to learn Spanish? Maybe it's to, you know, have community with the people that are on YouTube. Maybe it's to have, you know, greater uh, being able to teach people whatever stuff that I've known. Maybe it's be able to save them time so they don't have to read a whole book. They can just get the essence of it. And, do, you know, why do I want that? Get a sense of connection, right? And I'm cool with that in my heart. Then I take five deep breaths. Now I put my hands on my gut or my belly and I just question my intuition, you know, uh, and, and I ask, do I really want this? Do I really want to learn Spanish? Do I really want to get 100,000 YouTube subscribers? And yeah, so all the way across the board on my hand and my heart and my belly, uh, we're all saying yes. So now we know that that goal is ecologically sound. Perfect. So now let's go to step two. So whatever your goal is, after you've done the hand, heart, and gut thing, you've got to go on to step two, which is about focused attention. So this I thought was kind of interesting. This is about for a month, noticing what you're doing and not doing. So let's say my goal was to have 100,000 YouTube subscribers, but I'm not making any videos or the ones that I'm making are not that good. Well, then obviously my attention on that goal isn't working all that great. So you know, I want to be really recognizing if I'm putting my attention in the right spots to have that goal come to fruition. And ultimately, this is about being and not doing the thing, right? So, uh, you know, it's like if you want to be super fit, you want to be a person that has healthy behaviors, not just does the things and then, you know, smokes a pack of Marlboros afterwards. Right? You want to be the person that's actually being that. That's, that's part of your identity. All right, let's go to step three. So this is about deliberate action. Obviously, we've got to do stuff. We've got to take some kind of steps. We've got to get our body in movement. So what's this about? This is about doing what is required to create the outcome. This is probably the easiest of the bunch, which is just taking the steps forward that make you get that result that you're looking for. Okay, so now this is step four. This is where I fail quite a bit because I don't have accountability. It'd be nice to have someone that kind of keeps me on track that says, hey, you know, you didn't do your videos. You know, you're going to be a failure if you don't learn Spanish, right? So we all got to have accountability, right? It's nice to have goals and take actions, but we want to stay on track the whole time so that we're focused and that we're on the right path and that we know that we'll get the outcome that we're looking for if we're just always staying on that uh, yellow brick road, right? So for accountability, there's two ways to get it. There's the outside way and the inside way. So the outside way, the external method would be with having a coach, right? Somebody that you have to talk to once a week or once a month or whatever, or a therapist so that they're always uh, keeping your mind on the task that you're trying to accomplish. And the internal way is about journaling, right? So you got your to-do list and then you bring out your journal and say, okay, I did this thing and that thing, but uh oh, I didn't go over here. So as you're reviewing, 
your journal, you can see if you're actually doing the proper actions and it keeps you accountable. Now, here is what she recommends. So Dr. Swart recommends an app called Habit Share, and she uses that to build micro habits. So let me just give you a little sneak preview as to what this is. So this is about habit tracking, and this is with your your goals, and you put them into this app, and you can make friends and make sure that your friends are doing their goal and you're doing your goal. It's available in the App Store and the Android Store. And this is handy, again, for accountability and motivation. You know, want to make sure that you're doing those daily tasks every day and see how often you can keep that train of, of activity going on. So what she suggests is to pick 12 habits that support the goal. So if, I, if mine was to learn Spanish, you know, maybe I should be watching Spanish movies. I should be practicing for an hour a day, whatever. Uh, and then you pick three to focus on in the next three months. So I like this because it wasn't so tight and stringent. It was just more relaxed and a little bit loosey-goosey and an easier way to kind of make the goal not so hard and like difficult, but makes it more flexible and easier to accomplish. So, uh, so you pick those three goals to focus on in the next three months, nice and easy. Now, once those chosen habits have become habituated, then you can go to the next three habits, right? And then down the line. And then by the year end, you'll have 10 or 12 micro habits rewired into your way of being, right? So instead of checking, oh, did I do my things today? Did I take uh, all those deliberate actions? Don't even have to worry about it because it's going to be part of our habits, right? We'll have that app to keep us in track and uh, preventing us from giving up, all right? And this app, it's free, and you can see some of the other stuff that it does. Uh, it keeps you social, and it's flexible, and all that kind of jazz. That's what it looks like. And again, uh, that's handy. And here's some other info. And so definitely check it out, right? It's no, no, no reason not to. All right, so now let's continue with the source here. So now let's talk about four steps. We're just going to do a review. So these are the four things we were talking about. One is getting your mind, heart, and gut in alignment, right? So that we feel like this whole goal is good with us from head to toe, from our brain to our belly, and uh, that we're totally congruent with it. Second is focused attention so that we're focused on it, right? And third is deliberate action. And the fourth step is accountability. Okay, well, that's a great start, right? I mean, if we just do these four steps, we're going to be in a much better position. All right, so now let's take a look at the steps for neuroplasticity, which is the brain's way of rewiring itself in response to experience. So what we want to do is to have our brain change itself in a way so that it's enabling us to have our goals and our actions more subconsciously implanted and habituate us so we don't have to consciously think about them. So what do we need for that? Well, we need these three steps. We need myelination, we need synaptic connections, and we need neurogenesis. So what are these words? What's this all about? Okay, so myelination is fats and lipids in the neural pathways. So let me just skip through this for a little bit. Myelination, imagine if you were on a, on a, on a water slide and you slid down to the bottom and now you're choking on a bacon sandwich and you need somebody to give you the Heimlich maneuver and there's nobody around. The only guy around is at the top of the water slide. It's some fat guy and he's trying to take the stairs down. You're like, hey, buddy, that's too slow. Why don't you take the water slide? But the water slide's got no water on it, right? It needs the water so that a fat guy could slide down the slide and give you the Heimlich maneuver to help you, you know, puke up that bacon sandwich. Well, that's kind of like what myelination is. Myelination is the fat in between the, um, is like a sheath in between axons that allows the transformation or the uh, mu movement of information to move across axons. So we need that fat guy to move down the slide. Well, just like we need myelination, we need fat cells on that sheath in order to allow electrical impulses to travel along it, right, so that the neurons can fire. So the more fat that we have in our brain, if you will, in that pathway, the easier information is going to travel along those pathways, right? Just like that fat guy's got an easier time going down a wet slide than he has going down a ladder. Might not have been the best example, but uh, that kind of gross visual will kind of help you out with remembering. All right, so myelination, you need that fat to uh, transmit electrical impulses or, in other words, to send information throughout your brain. So we need that, okay? And repetition increases the speed of myelination growth. So think about the first time you learned something. You probably were not that good at it, right? Like uh, uno, dos, tres. I wasn't too good at saying that. Now I'm good at it, right? So repetition will be able to increase myelination growth. Okay, next thing is synaptic connections. So we need these connections in our brain 
to be able to, like we already have these neurons, what we need to have them now is holding hands. We need to have them connecting. So that's what that's about. And this last step is neurogenesis. This is two words, neuro, so that's like nerve cells. And genesis is about growth, so we need nerve cell growth, right? So we've got these baby nerve cells, and we want them to kind of grow up and become adult nerve cells that are in alignment with our goals, all right? So this is about getting our brains rewired in such a way so that it enables us to um, commit those action steps with greater ease and joy and glory. All right, so those are the steps for neuroplasticity. But we need something to fuel this, right? So if I want to learn Spanish because, you know, I need those credits to, to get my, my diploma or something, yeah, that's not, I'm not too desirous of it. But if I got to learn Spanish in order to, you know, communicate with my Spanish girlfriend, whoa, now I've got a desire, right? So, you know, whatever your goal is, Figure out what the fire is beneath it that will make it more magnetic, more alluring, more appealing for you in order to ramp up this magnetic desire so that you can get keep it going when the going gets rough, okay? So how can we ramp up magnetic desire? So this is needed for when we want to stop or like when we lose faith or we lose interest and we lose hope. Like, oh man, I've been making these YouTube videos and I'm not getting the subscribers or I'm trying to learn Spanish, but it's not quite working out. I'm losing interest. I'm losing faith. This is never going to work out. But if you got that magnetic desire there, it's like, no, 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 man. This is the way. Even though it's dark now, you know, we, at the end of the tunnel, there's a rainbow and puppy dogs and unicorns and magic and pot of gold and all that kind of jazz. Then it's easier to make that magnetic desire move forward, right? So we need this. So now that we know that, let's start powering this up. So here's how we can begin doing this. So affirmations is a way. So if I'm saying, oh man, my Spanish is no bueno, you know, I can be saying, well, hey, I, you know, I learned a couple of words there and uh, other people have learned it. I could probably do it too. And negative self-belief, oh, I'll never be able to do it. Well, others have, maybe we can too, right? Encountering negative thoughts, you know, oh, I just don't think that uh, I'm going to be able to reach a thousand subscribers or whatever. Well, we just put affirmations in there. So it's just kind of, peppering our brains with the right seasoning in order to generate that result that we want, okay? So affirmations are excellent for powering up our magnetic desire. And the other one is about having an action board or a vision board. So we've all heard about a vision board before, right? Well, she calls it an action board, which I like. So there's some rules with her vision board slash action board. And that is you ought to make it somewhat realistic, right? So if I said, you know, I want to have 10 million YouTube subscribers like Mr. Beast. And, and if I could get that by like six o'clock tonight, that'd be great. Uh, that's not realistic, right? It's got to be somewhat realistic. So make sure you have stuff on your vision board that is a stretch, but not too much of a stretch. It's still got to be real within the, the realm of possibility. Second thing is about selective attention, right? We want to just keep focusing on the stuff that we want, right? So instead of saying, Oh, gee, I hope I don't get cancer and then have people that are like with cancer on the thing. No, no, no. You, you say I want to be healthy. So you have pictures of health and robustness, that kind of thing. Another thing she talks about is having it bedside. I thought that was really clever. Most people will have it like in their living room, you know, they're, or they're, they'll hide it and look at it every now and again. But if you keep it bedside, well, then you'll see it when you wake up in the morning, which is terrific because you'll be in a theta brainwave state. And it keeps, you know, this is what you're focusing on for the day. And also when we're going to bed at night, we get to see that vision board or that action board so that we can bring it into our dreams when we go back to bed. And again, we'll be in that theta state, which is like a hypnagogic trance that enables that uh, vision to become more ensconced into our imagination. Also, when she talks about her vision board or action board, she talks about multisensory immersion. So most people that have a vision board and it's like visual things, but for me, speaking Spanish, let's say that's what that was, um, it would be, I want to use VACOG, right? Visual, auditory, kinesthetic, olfactory, and gustatory. So let's say I was in a restaurant and I said, hey, I'd like to order this, this stuff in Spanish. And then I talk about how good it smells and all that. And I use Spanish words. Wow, that would be cool, right? So now I'm using all of my senses. Okay, so when you're making your vision board, don't just make it about pictures, but make it about, you know, what you'd sound like, what the things that you would be feeling, what you'd be smelling. And if you just want to use an example, that dude, Michael Phelps, who's got, you know, the most Olympic medals out of anybody, 
he would use his visualization and he would imagine what the smell of the pool would be like, all right? And he would imagine the smell of the chlorine, all right? So that would be an example of multisensory immersion. Okay, and I like this last step, which is about, you know, when you're looking at your vision board is to be experiencing a sense of gratitude, okay? Why? So that when, let's say, uh, oh, look, there's that Spanish girl. Now I get to use my Spanish. But, oh, no, I'm feeling all nervous about it. I don't know if I'm going to be talking all bueno or not. Well, if I've, if I've associated gratitude with that desire and with that outcome, well, then my nervous system is like, ah, this is a wonderful place. This is a great opportunity for me to flex my, my Spanish linguistic skills. Or, you know, this is an opportunity to make another YouTube video and doing it with gratitude instead of, you know, seeing the opportunity and freezing with fear. Like, oh, no, I don't know. So, you know, you want to associate that goal with gratitude. So in a sense, this is an example of heavy and learning. Heavy and learning, you've heard about this before. This is known as, uh, uh, other people have rephrased it with the, with the saying, the neurons that fire together, wire together, right? So you want to wire in gratitude with that goal, right? So this is an example of heavy and learning, which comes from Donald Hebb. He's a Canadian. Uh, we get to read some of his history, actually. So here's Donald Hebb. He's a Canadian psychologist, influential in neuropsychology, where he sought to understand how the function of neurons contributed to psychological processes such as learning. And I just want to give you a side note about Donald Hebb. When he was in Canada, he was in McGill, actually, a university in, uh, in Montreal. And his, his wife uh, got, she was killed in a car accident. And then he was depressed, right? Every time it was his birthday, every year, it would remind him about his, his wife that passed away. So he was all feeling funky and depressed and down and out and in the dumps. And his buddy said, hey, man, you know, why don't you get yourself together and, and go to Harvard? So he went to Harvard, and that's when he wrote his book. So that's how why he's best known for his theory of Hebbian learning, which is in that book, Organization of Behavior. He's considered the father of neuropsychology and neural networks. And uh, he was also considered one of the top most, psychi most cited psychologists in the 20th century. All right. And I wrote a book about how to get over your ex in five hours. And one of the things in that book is talking about Donald Hebb, about, you know, committing to something bigger and larger than himself. Right. So instead of him spinning out, thinking about his wife that passed, he was instead focusing on other things. And hey, the neurons that fire together, wire together. He started feeling better about writing his book, started feeling better about his life and hope. And next thing you know, he wrote that book and it's uh, highly influential. All right, so there we go. That's some information about the source and the secrets of the universe, the science of the brain. Let's just do a quick recap. Remember, you got your goal, right? So those are the four steps. You get in alignment with your mind, your heart, and your gut. You got focused attention, deliberate action towards that goal, and then accountability, right? You can use that app, that habit app. And then you also got to have neuroplasticity so your brain rewires itself in uh in response to the goals that you're looking to accomplish so for that we need myelination we need that those lipids we need that that fat in your uh, axons to uh, transmit electrical impulses we need synaptic connection and we need nerve cell growth right we need neurogenesis so there we go that's some information about the source and i think just having this alone will be a helpful stepping stone for helping you to accomplish your goals all right, so thank you so much for joining. And if you'd like more, please subscribe. It just helps me realize that you guys are out there and you appreciate this stuff. And I look forward to sharing more with you in the future. This is DS Yvonne at reprogrammingmind.com. Bye for now.